this is the thing. I'm like, I believe that something might have been created, but I'm like not sure how. Mm. I feel like a lot. The difficulty I have with my personal belief and like religions is that it's very like obviously obviously you got the different schools of thought, but it's like I find it very like structured in certain ways that can feel problematic to myself in some ways. Mm. But my my mate is Susie Muslim, so mm. she's a bit more like um, mm. yeah spiritual, I guess. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But, you know, I think the first uh, foundation should be the belief in God, isn't it? It doesn't yeah. make sense that whether four school or five school, yeah, if yeah, you don't yeah. believe in God, it, yeah. it doesn't make any difference, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, you know, Islamic concept of uh, God is, God defined himself on chapter 112. And um, Allah tells us, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصُّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْمُنَ أَحَدْ Four line. Right. Four line definition, yeah, yeah, yeah. and two line of definition here. First two line is affirmation. Mm -hmm. So God is saying He's one, and then He was saying He's eternal, mm -hmm. He's self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So anything we see in this universe, mm -hmm. everything is creation. Everything is dependent on something, mm -hmm. but He is independent of the sustenance, mm -hmm. and also He is is eternal. Means He is the source of all the creation. But he is uncreated. Mm. So these are the affirmation. Mm -hmm. What now God negating two ideas mm -hmm. and he's saying Lam Yalid Walam Yulat Walam Yakul Lahu Kufun had. So there are a group of religious group, basically. They are defining God is three in one. Mm -hmm. God has a father, son, you know. Mm -hmm. So Allah is refuting the idea, Lam Yalid Walam Yulat. I don't have a father, neither I have a son. Mm. And Walam Yakul Lahu Kufwan had there is nothing comparable to God. Mm. So that actually sealed, do the seal the deal for, for the concept of God because mm. it eliminates all the concept, all of the concept of God that is wrong in the human understanding. Mm. A human mind would not conceive that a man is God, a statue is a God, a stone is God. Mm. We always think God is higher than something mm. in the creation, right? Mm. Therefore, we, the God, Allah said His name is Allah. Mm. And and then Allah defined his all powerful, mm -hmm. all knowing. Mm. And when Allah is defining all those attributes, he's not defining just saying I am all knowing. Mm. He's telling you also that you know also a very little. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When he said I'm all powerful, he's also saying you are very weak. Mm. Right? You cannot even help yourself. Yeah. Right? So the idea of anthropomorphism, mm -hmm. you know, that when people compare with God with human attribute, this is kind of a problematic understanding. So Islamic concept makes you clear or gives you a full clear understanding who the God is. So that the next point would be, when, in order to worship God, we need to know God who is, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your worship will be misdirected. Yeah. Imagine you identify God is a table, mm -hmm. right? And if you worship the table, mm. then the direction of worship is wrong, mm -hmm. right? So the true creator should be worshipped. That's why in Islam we say, if you worship anything beside God, it's shirk. Mm -hmm. Do you know the term? No, so shirk like association in partnering with God. Right. In oneness, in worship. Right. So, but don't you have all Allah in all things as well? Like where mashallah comes in? No, like uh, in the will of God, like anything happened through the will of God, through the acceptability of God. Imagine everything happens in this universe. Rain comes, all, all of the rain comes to this universe in a measurement that's known to Allah. Right. right? So all of the things that are happening, happening through the will of God. So what, whatever happened, we believe that is best for the universe. Because he is all-knowing. Mm. I cannot challenge him because he knows. Mm. Do you see? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say why there's too many, too much rain. But the question has a lot of inherent contradiction within the question. Because if I say why there's so much rain, that means I am knowing that this is already excessive. But do we know that how much rain it requires mm. 
to uh, to grow the vegetation mm. you see how much balance re required mm -hmm. do we know how much sunlight we need mm. so it's all of right. these things known to allah yeah. and so therefore whenever things happen to us we say alhamdulillah you know all those mm. greetings we acknowledge god grace and mercy mm. you see mm. in a simple form but therefore if allah facilitated all these things for us these are the sustenance in our life mm. imagine if there's no rain no vegetation yeah. will grow therefore when you go to sainsbury you don't have anything in the shelves mm. <laughs> so therefore we need to survive ourselves mm -hmm. imagine if creator created us and leave us alone without sustenance mm. that would be horrifying isn't yeah, it man. so therefore like imagine um i was reading a verse uh, i think they uh, allah said i have created you your own kind means Allah created male and a female mm. so that you may you find uh, uh, comfort in each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? imagine if you are a man mm. and your opposite kind is not available mm. yeah it would be very sad mm. and this is where like again like with the structures in religion and stuff because yeah. I'm queer myself and mm. I know a lot of Muslims are queer sorry second what did you say? queer as in like I'm gay Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, like, I do believe in, like, yeah, like, the creation of man and woman. But then now there's, like, discussions of where does, like, trans people fit into that. Because I suppose it would be more who are born or, like, assigned mm. a certain gender at birth. But yeah. then there's, like, the in betweens as well. Yeah. I, I think this question can be answered if we established who we are mm -hmm. and who created me. Mm. Now, then we'll, then we'll be talking objectively. Mm. Then can I define my own purpose? Mm. And that question actually fit on this category. Mm. If I'm not my maker, I cannot decide my own purpose. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Like imagine if you make the table. The table cannot decide its own purpose. Rather you define it because you're the maker. Mm. The same way, if the creator defined you, he created you and he defined you who you are. Right? Yeah. And then creator remind you what is your purpose. Right. And then you don't know through your intellectual reason when he communicated through prophets and messenger, mm. then as an external agent will come to you with proofs and evidence that why you, why you have to follow this purpose mm. rather than know your own purpose. Like right. for example, creator in, in the Quran, Allah said, Have you seen the ejected fluid that created you? Did you create yourself or am I the creator? Mm. Look at the question God posed to human being. Asking to self-reflect, where did I come from? What am I doing? Where am I going? So these existential question cannot be answered through a lens of subjectivity. Rather should be objective. Now, for example, when God created human being, he created in pairs, cattle in pairs, ant in pairs, fruits, uh, uh, sorry, human being in pairs, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm, oh, yeah. And Allah said, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, uh, so Allah created things in pairs and He has a plan for them. And now the plan cannot be known through our desire. Now imagine if you say, I believe this is my purpose. Mm -hmm. Someone else say, I believe Dancing is my purpose. Someone said, no, singing is my purpose. Someone else said, no, nah, I think um, flying is the purpose. Mm. Someone said, no, football is my purpose. If there is no objective guidance comes, then everyone will be following their own desire as their own guidance. And then we will have a chaos and corruption in the society. But God didn't leave us alone to make this judgment to our own self. Rather, when he created us, then he tell us, you, look at your structure, you, you have been designed and you have a purpose. Everything you do in your life has a purpose. Mm. So do you think that collectively your life has no purpose? Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then Allah defining that, okay, the role of man and woman. And then your question can come, okay, where do I fit in? So that Allah tells us that how he created both mm. and 
some people even feel it but look the life is test if the life is test then we need to refrain from that right from the trials right mm -hmm. and and um, i mean i looked into i spoke to many mm -hmm. uh, they have different gender ideas mm -hmm. and and i and always tell them look mm -hmm. i don't know what's inside you what's going mm -hmm. on given the benefit of the doubt oh, mm -hmm. that okay for surety you have the inclination for someone mm -hmm. i'd still say allah said wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa li a'budu allah created mankind and jinn kind to test you and the test you what test you so that you can live through the guidance and guidance tells us man and woman should get married and procreate and then give us a guideline of social structure imagine if there is no structure of the families you will not be existing here not talking to me due to the fact that your family has maintained a family structure that's why you were here so god created adam and eve and from adam and eve the human progeny continued till to this day and that is the god way how he create things right so going back to the question of that how can we believe that islam is true no i believe it you believe yeah. islam is true yeah definitely why don't you accept islam it's not that I don't accept it, it's just, um, I don't know, I believe that it exists, but I don't know whether I fit into it. Like, well, I do fit into that picture, but I don't know if, like, that is my path. In okay, so basically, life. basically, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a checklist, mm -hmm. if you have a checklist, yeah. everything you do, you have a checklist, mm -hmm. right? These are the criteria. Imagine you want to pass the driving test. Yeah. You need to pass certain test, like maneuver, making sure that you don't mess around in the roundabout. Mm -hmm. You maintain your speed limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lane discipline you maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of these things will, the driving instructor after the exam will tick, 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 mm -hmm. and you pass. No minor, no, sorry, no major. Mm -hmm. yeah. No serious, no major. That means you are pass. Mm -hmm. One or two minor examiner will give you benefit of the doubt and you pass right same way in our life either god exists or it doesn't it's an absurd idea right. that god doesn't exist so first tick a god exists then do i believe that god leave us alone without guiding us no we don't believe that it doesn't make sense otherwise it's like god created with no purpose it, it it's contradictory within the notion of the reality because we see everything is purpose. So therefore we must have a purpose. Otherwise it will be a contradictory notion. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, then we need a purpose. Then how do we know the purpose? Through subjective lens or objective lens? Of course it has to be objective lens. And the objective lens would be God communicate through the messengers. And you can argue or question why human messenger? Why not angel? Why not other way? But the best way to fit for us is a human being. Because human being will explain in a way that a human being understand, mm -hmm. simplistic way. Mm -hmm. And in, if a human being can do that, we'll have no excuse, right. right? So, and then within the human being, you will find many of them claiming to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. And then how do you verify who is speaking the truth mm -hmm. and who is lying? Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at Muhammad, peace we have only last and final messenger. Okay. He was the last messenger. God sent last messenger and a prophet sent to mankind and he claimed that he is from God and his claim is supported by miracles evidence and compelling proofs right yeah and then he has many declared many prophecy which all of the prophecy came true now if we investigate him and this is a booklet, yeah, where it talks about three categories, yeah. Either he's liar or is deluded or speaking the truth. Prophet Muhammad was an exemplary character and the most book has been written in his name. And he was widely remembered 
and then he was never be a deluded person because people used to keep their belongings to him even though they did not believe in his message but they used to keep their belonging to him that shows that I'm, you would not keep your belongings to a madman right and historically we have no record of in fact he was the most trustworthy person ever existed in the history of the planet and the title was given by the non muslim as sadiq al amin mean that trustworthy and truthful so he passed the criteria of test of testimony you know like testimony if anyone say uh, you know if your parents say or your mother say i've done something at home would you ever doubt that your mother didn't do no. why because she speak the truth mm. and why should he even lie mm. you see but what about the nuances in this when he said nuances what do you mean yeah as in like you putting it very like structures like categories mm. what about like not that i'm saying the prophet was any of yeah. the others in the truth but um Yeah, how come you presenting it like this and not with a nuance? I would like to understand what do you mean by <laughs> as in like sorry, I yeah. like with my with my mom doing the chores. Um what if she did part of it? Okay. So therefore if she lied in any time in her life, mm-hmm. then you can reject her. Mm-hmm. But with Prophet Muhammad, we never know to him lie. Do you see? So on that category we cannot apply his standard with anyone else you see right, right. so historically he was known to be the most trustworthy person mm-hmm. and then he was given the title mm-hmm. we don't give title to anyone no, right yeah. when he was given to the all truthful mm-hmm. that is a huge one mm-hmm. and now his claim is not a new one the other prophets and messenger also came to this world with the same message and he did not preaching the new message his message is old message he is the last of the prophet La- last messenger god would not communicate something to children of israel and suddenly change the message to for us you see god is not the author of confusion so therefore in the uniqueness of message is always of 10 people change the religion or change the message of the prophets due to their desire and other motives object uh, worldly motives mm-hmm. but god always reinstate the message by sending the messenger again so that he doesn't do injustice to you because if you say i don't have the correct guidance mm-hmm. that is an injustice mm-hmm. because you have a right to god that he showed you the true guidance right. do you see my point so on that point god sent he he reinstate his final messenger with the message what was communicated before and then telling you this is not the new message if often prophet in the quran a prophet has been persecuted by the, his own people because he's preaching the message and he was saying uh, why do you torture me why do you you know do these things to me and then allah revealed in the quran telling prophet muhammad do your brother in faith that that prophet give an example of prophet moses prophet jesus prophet abraham they were the same when they came to their own people they persecuted him so don't feel low god is giving said i am with you right yeah allah said i am with you i am the one who is protecting you and the universe yeah even hold the world in i am with you right so god is reinstating his message by making sure that he send the correct messenger and the correct messenger is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, allah mentioned in the quran wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin i have not sent other than a mercy for mankind right what is mercy for mankind not to give efficient chips <laughs> but of course showing the true guidance if someone shows you the our after life what will be happen and if someone answer correctly about all this existential question indeed he is for mercy for mankind why because he is making sense the truth about our life and life after because there is a heaven and hell and those who believe and do good deeds and they they will go to paradise through the mercy of god and those who reject do criminal activities allah will put them to the hell fire 
of course allah's mercy is there as well mm. we don't know how much mercy he has mm. but we know he defined he told us he is all merciful mm. the all ar rahman ar rahim the merciful the kind so judgment allah always uses his mercy and his mercy prevails his wrath so we need to do our bit so going back to the point so like checklist right say you believe in god you believe in uh, prophet muhammad as a messenger and you believe that there is an objective purpose we need right and fourthly is only point remaining is that you need to accept it <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah, 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 no, it was great. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think? Do you want to take it? Accept it? Um, I'll tell you why. I'll have a think. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll, I'll give you option. Okay. And you want to make your own decision, okay? Inshallah. Right. You know that, inshallah. I mean, God willing, yeah? If, if you accept it, then Allah will forgive all your past sin. And if you ask Allah, that I want to come out of whatever I'm feeling, it is Allah can help you. Who can truly help you? Look, any troubles we go through, Allah can help you. If He created you from nothing, surely it's not difficult for Him to take you out something which you don't like or which He doesn't accept. You see? Now imagine if someone die and in, and in a state of a disbelief, that means your totality of your life, you rejected creator of everything he has given you. Mm -hmm. As if someone, like imagine if every day someone gives you something mm -hmm. and you say, I never give thank you to him. Mm -hmm. Just worldly benefit, just think about it, how bad it is. And now think about Allah. The analogies cannot be fit. It's not the best yeah. analogy. But now if you say, look, if you think, look, I'm a sinner, and God will not forgive me, I'm, I've done too much sin. Maybe my sin will touch in mountain. Don't worry about it. Allah said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ O oh, my servant, do not lost hope in forgiveness and mercy from me. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الزُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah will forgive all the sin. So, don't, don't lost your hope in receiving mercy of Allah. At the same time, if you accept it and imagine, God forbid, if something happened, if you die, at least you know in a, you left this world in a better position. Mm. The consequences, if you accept it, there is no loss. Mm. If you reject it, it's a risk. Yeah, no, 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 I, I just wanted to make it clear to you so that yeah, yeah, yeah. at least makes sense. But like I said, our guidance must be come from our objective source. Yeah. Self-defining our purpose is self-contradictory so therefore like sometimes someone say oh because i feel it mm. that is truth mm. but feeling is not the the parameter of truth no. yeah. someone will say look i feel to stab someone does it make it true no. no so therefore allah the creator of the heavens and the earth mm. created everything with absolute precision and, and Allah said, do you not see the sign in this universe? Because you don't see Allah, but you see the sign. When you look at the sun, sun gives the light, brighten the whole world. Mm -hmm. And the moon with a luminous light, mm -hmm. cool, comes on the night. Mm -hmm. These are massive signs. Yeah. What else? Sun, look at the sun size. Mm -hmm. If someone say, I wanted to know the sign, Few million universe can fit into a, a yeah, sun. Yeah. yeah, like millions of stars and uh, you know galaxies. Yeah. These are the sign. And Allah said, "Do you not see the sign? I have left His sign within you and within horizon." Allah said, "Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusi." I have shown the, you the sign in horizon and within yourself until it's manifest clear to you. Right. So Allah is saying. What happened? Why you are rejecting me? What? People will have to fight with himself to reject Allah. But believing is the intuitiveness. Believing Allah is the self-intuitiveness. Because Allah, our prophets, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that every children have their intuitiveness believing Allah. 
and there's called fitrah. Mm. And it's their society, family, they change this belief. Right. So intuitively, everyone is a believer mm. in God. Mm. They may not know maybe the article of faith, right? Yeah. But they know there is one higher being. And there are many studies has been done. Even in Oxford University, they done a study. I think um, Al Barrett, uh, uh, he wrote a book called A Born Believer where they investigated a number of children from different age group. And after the investigation, they found out all of the children have a higher inclination, means they believe in a higher power. Mm. Right? What does tell you? does tell you that the innately, we know there is a maker. It is the soci society's influence make us forgot. Right. But then Allah in, in Quran in reminded you that I have given you, uh, uh, in the Sama'a wal Basara wal Fuad, I have given you... Um, uh, uh, the the tools of um, uh, in the sama'a wal basara I have given you reasoning, hearing, and vision so that you you reflect. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you if you have all the sign but you don't have eyesight and reasoning, you cannot connect the sign. Mm -hmm. The whole point is sign is there and then you build upon with the eye and reasoning and all of this faculty so that you can connect. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like how can I connect? Mm -hmm. So now, how can I deny my sign and the sign? Yeah, I get that. Just think about the tree. When the tree take your carbon dioxide, who designed that tree? Allah. Allah. Otherwise, He designed you. Yeah. So that shows the uniqueness, singularity on the Allah's wisdom that how Allah created you and tree so that it can help us sustain. I mean, you have a message to take on. <laughs> I will, I will. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sorry, I, I forgot your name. I forgot Victor. to ask your name. Victor. Victor. Yeah. Victor. How I, name? Aziz, yeah. Aziz. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know. If I can say, La ilaha illallah, <laughs> and I'll come back. And I'll, uh, so you've done the half part, you know that. <laughs> you just, if you say Muhammad Rasulullah, you become a Muslim. No, 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 I won't, <laughs> I won't do that. That's why I wanted Not to yet. give you this one. Have you, have you taken this one? This is I a, will, will. this is um, the litmus test, you can call it. Yeah, right. And there are book has been written. Um, uh, uh, one of the book, um, uh, the book called uh, The Sealed Nectar. Mm -hmm. uh, if, have a look. The Sealed Nectar, Ar Rahikul Maktoum. Mm -hmm. It's a very good biography of Prophet, right? Honestly, this will be an eye opener book. Okay. The book is a bit dry, mm -hmm. but you need to have patience. Right. Ar Rahikul Maktoum. Uh, yeah, this is um, the English. Yeah, do you want to take a yeah. picture of, uh, through your phone? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it tells you about uh, the history of Arabia, mm -hmm. the ne the need for revelation, mm -hmm. and. And, and the criterion and objective um, parameter of accepting Prophet Muhammad, why he's a messenger of God, and his life mm -hmm. all about the war he has to dealt with, mm -hmm. how he was a peacemaker, mm -hmm. and how he resolved problem, how he dealt with uh, the Quraysh torture, his own people tortured him and prosecuted him. How did he deal with them? Did he fight them back or did he show mercy and kindness? So when you read through his life, you will truly know why Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Why he is a mercy for mankind? Then you realize. Because unless you know that man, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and like few of the uh, big, big scholars, mm -hmm. non-Muslim scholars, like um, George Bernard Shaw, mm -hmm. like, like Martha Gandhi, and all of the big, big name people, they mention about very highly about Prophet Muhammad. And in fact, some of them, they said he is the savior for mankind. Mm. Means we don't say he's God, he's a prophet of God, right? Prophet, yeah. So we don't worship Muhammad, we worship Allah. Mm. So, but he, he, he showed us the way. And that's why whenever we heard his name, we say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him. Mm. Right? We shouldn't say to anyone else mm. but him. Because he deserved this Praise. But Victor, on that nice note, to meet you. <laughs> thank you. you look after yourself. Yeah, thank you.
Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Have a lovely evening. Alhamdulillah. Um, I hope uh, Victor taken a good message. Um, so he accepted half of the faith and he is going to read about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's biography, inshallah. And inshallah, we will come to Islam. Please make dua for him. Assalamu alaikum.